Hey guys, John from FlyAteMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to be going over the basics of VFR sectional charts. So we have our VFR sectional chart pulled up here. We're looking at the Venice Airport. And let's just look at some basic things that we see around here. So the first thing we notice is all these different shaded areas. We have some yellow around here, and we have this light greenish around here. Well, the yellow just means congested areas or areas with lots of buildings, homes, uh, basically cities. Easy to spot at night. They're typically all lit up. Um, easy to spot during the daytime, too, because this is all swampland in here. That's what all these little tiny little sprout things are. That just is a symbol that means many lakes. And then all in here is going to be built up uh, with lots of roads and houses. As we look over here, we see uh, Magenta Airport, Venice Airport in Magenta. And that means it's a non-towered airport. We can look over here and see Punta Gorda. It's blue. That means it is a towered airport. And we notice the Class D ring, the blue dashed line here, the Class Delta ring. And we notice this hazy magenta ring around here hazy magenta ring denoting that the Class E airspace comes all the way down to 700 feet here where everywhere else out here Class E airspace is all at 1200 feet and it's Class G below that. So at Venice it's Class G airspace from the surface on up to 700 feet and then above that Class E airspace out here Class G from the ground up to 1200 and then Class E airspace. We can see here, we've got, let's use Punta Gorda for an example. Their Class D airspace, this blue ring, goes up to 2,500 feet. So 2,500 feet MSL. And so if we're at, say, 3,000 feet MSL, then we're above their airspace. We're clear of the Class Delta. We can look here and we can read that this is for the Punta Gorda Airport, and the identifier for Punta Gorda is PGD. They have a control tower, CT, and that frequency is 121.0. It has a star there, meaning that that's a part-time control tower. At about 10 p.m., that control tower closes, and we could check that time in our AFD, or Airport Facility Directory, that little green booklet, or on your iPad. Um, that'll tell you uh, what time the tower hours of operations are. Then we have this little blue C here next to all this, and what that means is when the tower closes, the CTAF, or Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, is going to be 121.0. If we come back to Venice over here, we notice that the CTAF frequency is 122725. There's no control tower in Venice, so it's just 122725 all day long and all night long. Over here we have an ASOS, an Automated Surface Observation Station at Punta Gorda to get weather information from. And that frequency is 135.675, so we would dial that frequency into our comm radio, the left side of the panel typically, to either talk to the tower or listen to the ASOS. The field elevation is 26 feet above sea level. We have lights at the airport, so if we're coming in there at night, it's lighted, but it's got a little star next to that L, and what that means is it's um, Lit part-timer. Lighting limitations exist is the technical term. Lighting limitations exist. What those lighting limitations typically are is, well, the lights turn off, and to turn back on, you'll have to click your mic three times, five times, or seven times within five seconds, and by clicking the microphone making that pop, pop, pop sound on the frequency, it'll turn the lights back on. Three times low, five times medium, seven clicks for high. The longest runway we have available at Punta Gorda is 7,200 feet. We could look over here at Venice and notice the longest runway we have is 5,000 feet. The 122.975 frequency down here, there's not a C next to it, it's not an ASOS frequency. What that is is the Unicom frequency. So that frequency is what we could use to contact the FBO when we're 20 miles out and ask them to have a rental car ready for us or ask them uh, you know, what the price of fuel is, or any sort of services you need from the FBO, you would contact them on that frequency. And same thing in Venice. The FBO, you can see that the FBO also uses this as the Unicom frequency as well as the CTAF. Typically, towered airports don't want you calling over tower frequency for things like rental cars and stuff like that, so they have a separate frequency there for that. We can notice here that we have these little dashed uh, lines coming from our circle. We have them at Venice as well. And then we notice that this is just perfectly round here at Coral Creek. What those little squares are, little lines coming off there, it denotes that there's services available at the airport. Typically that the airport has fuel or maintenance services available. So if you're looking for a place to land, you wouldn't want to go here. That's private anyways. We can see PVT means private. But we could go to LaBelle. 
we could go to Punta Gorda, we could go to Venice, and we could expect to find some fuel there. Not to say that it's open 24-7, but during the day you could expect to find a fuel pump somewhere there. We also see at Punta Gorda, we have this little star here, we've got another star over at Venice. Those stars mean that there is a rotating beacon in service from sunset to sunrise all night long. So we'll see a white and a green flash as we're flying towards the airport. It's like a lighthouse, but for airplanes. And so that's a lighted um, rotating beacon on the airport. They also typically turn that beacon on during the daytime when the weather's below VFR. So if you see it going at noon or one o'clock and it's bright daylight outside, probably means the ceiling's off a of low or visibility's very low. How we're gonna use this sectional chart to navigate is we're gonna identify landmarks. This whole idea of a VFR sectional chart is that it's visual in nature. So VFR sectional, all visual. Well, we got some great visual identifiers. We have a highway running into another big highway, interstates here. We can see Interstate 75 there. So that's very easy to see that intersection there. We've got towers that show up to let us know there's towers in the area. And these are the heights of the towers, 330 feet MSL, 601 feet MSL, 586 above sea, above ground level, rather, 601 feet above sea level. So it looks to me like the ground, if we did some simple math there, the ground is 15 feet above sea level. Here we've got another tower, 269 feet MSL. We've got a big tower up here, and they change the symbol for the big tower. They make it 1749. If it's over 1,000 feet tall, it's this taller tower. All these little uh, teepees are just 1,000 feet or less. So when we see this big tall symbol here, 1,750 foot, that's a tall tower. You're gonna to wanna to be probably 1,000 feet above that thing to clear it. You're gonna be nearly 3,000 feet just to clear a tower. And we can see here that the ground elevation in that area is still less than 100 feet. So pretty um, close to sea level still there. We also see some rivers here we could use to identify and some bridges. Bridges are great identifiers as well as some passes. We can see where we'd have a uh, Big Pass there, we have Stump Pass here. We don't see those names on the chart, we just know that from living in the local area. But it even denotes all these little islands for us, another little bridge here. So very easily identifiable things. Another pass up here. So when you're along the coastline, or you're um, really when you're flying anywhere, you can always find a river and a road that intersect. Intersections are great to identify yourself. Intersecting roads here, we have railroads, these little things with uh, the hash marks across there, or I guess that's supposed to be their version of railroad ties. So railroad passing through the town of Arcadia. So we could probably find a railroad, follow that into the town. We'll see all the buildings around with the swampland all around. Look just to the southeast of there and we'll find the airport. So very easily identifiable things is what you're looking for in the sectional chart. We even see some uh, different airspace over here. Some MOAs, which we'll get into later in another video. Some military operations areas and restricted airspace. And also, we'll take a look here at Class Charlie airspace. That's the solid magenta ring, so Class Charlie airspace around Sarasota Airport here. It's got a little bit of echo airspace that comes out to the surface right there. And we have Bravo airspace all around the Tampa area. And this is the Tampa Class Bravo. Several rings, kind of like that upside down wedding cake shape that we talk about in our airspace videos, which I'll put some links in down in the description so you can learn all about class A, B, C, D, and E airspace, as well as G airspace. There's no F airspace. Other little things to note on this sectional chart, lakes are great things to reference, but they're not gonna put every little lake on there. So smaller lakes probably won't be on there. If it's a half mile or a mile across, you can expect to see it on the chart probably. We'll also take a little quick look back here to our airport symbology. And we notice here we have RP13. What does RP13 mean? It means right pattern for runway 13. And we have this little depiction here of the runways of Venice. And now this isn't totally current. We don't actually have runway 927 anymore. It's been closed for many years. They still kind of have it depicted on the chart there. But we would check the AFD and a current AFD would let us know what runways we do in fact have. This is just a, a rough depiction. And we would know one, runway 13 heading this way is right traffic, where all the other runways like 31 are left traffic. We can also look over here, and the last thing we'll talk about on the sectional chart is our VOR. So we see this compass rose ring around this Class D airspace. Let's look at some other Class D airspace so we see what one looks like without a VOR. So if we find a nice little Class D airport over here on the other coast, 
we can see they don't have that compass rose. They don't have a VOR on the airport, even though it is a Class D airport with a ceiling of 2,500 feet MSL, control tower 120.4. So let's go ahead and look here at Punta Gorda Airport. And we'll see we have this little dot. That's the location of the VOR on the field. And then this compass rose letting us know that we have a VOR there. In here, VOR frequency, Punta Gorda VOR, the identifier for it the Morse code identifier for it, which we'll talk about later, and the frequency you would dial into your nav radio. Typically the nav radios are on the right side of the instrument panel, and you'll dial in 110.2, and that would give you the Punta Gorda VOR. Then you could turn up your nav radio volume and listen to the Morse code identifier if you want. You could contact St. Petersburg Radio, St. Petersburg Flight Station, on 122.025. We'll talk about flight service later on in our course. But that's the basics of our V. VFR sectional. VFR sectional, visual reference, we have some railroad tracks, we have roads, we have rivers, and we have big interstates we can use all to identify where we're at along with the towns and cities. Other airports make great checkpoints and of course our barrier islands are very helpful as well. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching, and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video, and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below, and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.